Yes, I feel like the older generation doesn't have to deal with this, but those that are millenniums and all this is happening around us on Facebook, Twitter, friends, we go but, out But that's to, not you. You're not like that. No, I'm just saying how did I pre like, make my relationship with God stronger when all these things are You're happening You're already doing me. that. I think, I think the issue with you, young lady, what was your first name? Mia. 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 Okay. Mia, I think the situation with you is one of how do I make myself more attractive to people who I find unattractive? Unattractive in their moral stance, unattractive in the way they conduct their lives, unattractive in the way of their attitude toward Christianity, all of those kinds of things. So in other words, you're saying, without saying it, I'm a bright light in a very dull world, and it seems if I try to reach out and have a relationship with other people, I, I, I'm either A, uh, try to be, they try to manipulate me into their black hole, you know, or, or, or manipulate me into doing things that I'm not comfortable with as a Christian girl, woman. Or B, they ignore me altogether, which does your, puts bullet holes in your, in your ego. Uh, the answer to your question, young lady, is you don't need to be stronger. You just need to be more definitive about who you let into your heart. You see, I think for a lot of folks who don't see their value, you, you're, you're not an unattractive girl. And see, you've got to, you've got to believe God. And, and if you're praying and asking, if you're ready to be married then you've got to be willing to ask God, Lord, send me the right men or men for me. Because he may send one or two your way or three your way, depending, you know, uh, how good your prayer life is. God, yeah, God will often give you a choice. Yeah. Uh, uh, depending on, you know, A, do I, am I planning on being involved in the ministry? No, then God's going to send you a different kind of man. Do you understand that one? Or if you're a woman that's had a broken heart in the past or you were treated with disrespect as a young girl, Right? And you're looking for someone who will elevate your opinion of yourself by treating you extremely well. Not necessarily like a Jewish princess, but nevertheless very well. You're entitled to that, and God will send you that kind of a man. See? I know you do. See? I know you do. So the, my value to you, Mia, is A, stop judging yourself as A, or A, unattractive, or B, I'm too unattainable. You can't be too unattainable. All you need to be is what I said before earlier, making yourself open-hearted to people. And I tell this to women all the time, because I was a real dog. And I know women have needs that they can't protect themselves from. The right man with the right word, with the right words at the right time to any woman, they're done. And you ladies know I'm telling the truth. No matter how smart you are, a pagan man adapts himself to you. We're like aliens. Now girls, you, you know this girls, right? I know I keep looking at married women, but. In general, you girls know this, and you know men are dogs, and you know that you're lonely, and you know that you want a relationship with somebody. And when you meet somebody that makes your little heart go pat a pat, the last thing on your mind is if he's going to love me and if he's going to love Jesus. You just want to have a friend. And then they convince you that they love you. Then you start treating them like you love them. You follow me? See, the man will make you feel like you love, he loves you. And then you go ahead and give it up. I'm not trying to be crude, but you start treating him like a man that loves you and you think you're going to get the right kind of responses. And I can tell you, you won't. Until he gets what he wants and then it's bye-bye baby. People say all the time, well, should I wait till I'm married? Absolutely. Well, what if he doesn't want to wait? Too bad. <laughs> Too bad. Come on, girls, you have control over that. It's the greatest word in the English language to a horny young man. No. If he doesn't love you for who you are, if he's not willing to wait, for himself, I can tell you, the chances are you're going to be very disappointed. And, and, and he's going to turn around and do what the devil does. I tested you to see if you do it. You did it. Now look at you. Now I'm going to dump guilt on you for the next six months or eight months or ten years. And even worse, now you've got a baby what it is. It's all your fault. See what you did? Follow me? No, you're doing nothing wrong. I'll tell you that by the Holy Ghost. But be a little less concerned about how people think about you. And you go on pleasing God. And if a man or a woman pleases God, he will bring you the desires of your heart. I promise you that. Amen. All right? But you don't, have to, you don't have to let your light shine in front of the dogs and expect the dogs not to bark. You know? Is it normal to have doubts? About relationships? Or, like, for example, I'm dating and... Sure, why not? Relationship is healthy, really healthy. To doubt? Oh, 
oh, of course it's healthy to doubt. It's like when you want to go and buy a house, right? Aren't you going to get the house examined and searched and checked and make sure there's no termites in the foundations that you can't, or they've painted over walls that are rotten? Yes, of course, I think that's good. But what I'm trying to suggest to people is that you get to know those things before you begin to think in your mind, like most girls do, I think you make a great husband and I can just imagine us sitting on the front row of the church and then I can see the pastor marrying us and we're going to have beautiful children. Oh, it's going to be so... And, and you know, you're looking right past the fact that, you know, his head swivels around, he casts our green stuff out of his mouth. You know, he's not going to turn into a prince because you want him to be. Those kinds of doubts, let's, let's change the word doubt, okay? Because doubt has the connotation of fear. You have the fear of relationships because you've been... You've been taken advantage of as far as your heart is concerned, okay? Let's put it that way. Once your heart's been kicked around enough, it's like a guy that's been punched in the face 15 times. He's not going to insult a guy that's twice his side without getting ready to duck. <laughs> you know, you're going to say, oh, here, punch me in the face, you know? So when it comes to you, you're not going to punch me in my heart, you know? But you've got to make sure that you don't turn that into a huge stop sign because men will see that and it'll freak them out. So what you do is you become selective before you give. That's why I say make some phone calls. I think it was a very good idea. Get on the phone and call the guy up. Say hi. You know, blah, blah, blah. I thought maybe you'd like to come to church with me on Sunday. And that's a good way of us meeting one another. Well, I'm busy on Sunday. Well, you got, you got an answer straight away. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he actually said that it was a dating app. And I guess the guy was trying to... Come sit up here. 758. We'll turn into pumpkins in yeah, two minutes. And she was told... Um, don't do that. You really want to find out if there's going to be a chemistry between you, if there's going to be something you're going to like about the person. Otherwise, like Pastor said, don't waste your time. And so you say something like, hey, I'll, I'll be home at 7 o'clock, and I'd love to hear your voice. Give me a call. Well, that's true. You now, want some to... of us almost don't understand this, but this generation, they just text. If a person wants to take you out, they text you and tell you where you're going to meet. See, we didn't do that. You we might be on the. You, meet Dad. you could have the Boston Strangler on the other end of the line. You wouldn't know until he's got his hands around your throat. Right? <laughs> Come on, be, honestly. So, so there are some really sweet men out there who are genuinely looking for a wife. And ladies, if you want a husband, that's the kind of guy you want. Right? I mean, if you're a Christian girl, you don't want to spend the rest of your life jumping from, you know, one nest to another, do you? Do you? You've been there, done that, done work, does it? What if the only reason why they're supposed to meet up with this person is to help them to become a stronger That's Christian quite possible, too. Bring him to church and you guys just that's to that's what I call the carrot, the carrot factor. And maybe then he's got a friend you're supposed to meet. Yeah, this is dangling the carrot. Yeah, you, you got to trust God in this. God really knows I knew if I brought you up here, that was the last time I'd have a chance to say anything. Okay, but can I just read this? Yeah. This is good about yeah, the go guy that, that you guys will take the path of least resistance for his whole life. What's, we we what heard was a that? woman asking a question. She'd been dating this guy for four years. <laughs> now they were talking about moving in together. She says, what do I do? Is that a bad idea, especially because I want to get married? And the guy says, yes. There are men that will take the path of least resistance. All men will take the path of least resistance. I don't. And Is that right? And never marry you once you give yeah. him whatever he wants. Come on, go sit down over there. Don't all men will take the path of least resistance because we're all dogs. Come on, you're sitting there looking at a calf in a new day and some of you older ladies saying, oh, you shouldn't say that. Well, why not? It's true. Most reason men are looking for a wife is they're tired of being dogs. They need someone to train them. Right? So we know you ladies have the moral high ground. We know you're smarter than we are. We know all those things. But primarily, you ask my wife, what did I say to you on the first time we went out a few times, right? And well, then you were so sweet. Well, that was then. But, but, but in general, did, didn't I tell you I was looking for a wife? Yes. Ah. Right front. Whoops, I, whoops. He was looking for Fancy a wife. saying that. I'm looking for a wife. Oh, really? No, he literally had been all over the place looking for a wife. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I made a few bad choices. On the way. Hallelujah. All right, so. I don't know if I answered the question. I forgot what the question was now. What was the question? Oh, yes. To be, to be cautious is a good thing. To be aloof is not a good thing. I think if you know who you are, sister, and you know that you're an attractive girl and you've got a big heart and that you've got a, a lot to give, a lot of love to give, that you want to be a mom, you know, and a housewife, I know you do. 
because I know, I know you've been around a lot. See, these are great qualities, but if you meet somebody and they come on to you, number one, as a woman, you'll know if he's a beast or if he's just if he's looking to go out, right? You do. You know that. Why go against the Spirit of God in you and, and try something out that you know is not going to work anyway? One of the things you're looking for, and I know this because I just know you, is that you want a tender-hearted man. You want a kind person, right? So you're going to ask questions that will tell you that answer straight away, if he's kind or not, right? If he is kind, then what's, what's, what's the problem? Go out and have lunch with him. Like, what's he going to do, leap over the table at you? See? Or you're going to leap over the table at you? That's not the point. The point is you're getting to know a man's character, and you can't do that over a text. You've got to do that face-to-face. -face. That's why my wife suggested pick up the phone. Or, hey, you call me at 7 o'clock. I'd love to hear your voice. You know, before we decide what we should do as far as going, let me hear your voice. Call me Saturday night, and guess what you're going to say to him? I'd love to see you and talk to you some more. Why don't you meet me at my church tomorrow? See? And if he says, oh, I'm busy, well, how much does he want to get to know you? So what I'm saying is, if you can maintain as a woman your vulnerability, right? Your femininity, your allurement, which all you girls have, right? All of you are given that as a God's gift, right? That's your grace gift, is the allurement that you have and the sensitivity you have to a man who's looking for your kind of frequency. And then spend a bit of time to go out with them and talk to them. And if you get a lot of no, 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 no. Yeah, but don't get real serious. At no, no, I wouldn't get serious right either. But, but <laughs> Yeah, I wouldn't get serious, but I don't want you to waste your time with a loser either. There's a, lot, there's a lot of men out there, and they're looking for a lady that they can have a life with. And if they're not, then you don't want to be bothered with them anyway. So, yeah, I would be cautious. But, again, don't harden your heart. I mean... I tell, I tell women this all the time. There are a lot of men that are hurt out there, and the first thing I know, they don't want from you, having just met you, is rejection. You may as well smack them in the middle of their eyes with a two-by-four or a baseball bat. Men are tired of being rejected. doesn't mean that you don't have the right and the power as a woman, as a, as a woman of God, to, to make requirements in your own heart, some guidelines in your own heart, and stick to them. Run him through the hoops and see if he, you know, has a good long shot. Follow me? Does that answer your question, dear? But as far as going out and meeting somebody, yeah, go out and meet somebody. What do you got to worry about? You obviously are cautious. Take somebody with you. You can do that, but you're old enough to, you know, you don't, you don't go to a date at 12 o'clock at night. You don't, you know, scurry around in little places or, you know, get to know the guy for us, you know, where, where you're comfortable. And then see how it goes. I was saying I've been married for three years and the dating scene has just been <laughs> horrible. horrible. And like you said, um, well, a lot, of the, a lot of the men that I came across, they had not healed from their relationships. And, yeah. and I've allowed God to, you know, restore a lot of things to where, you know, I went through divorce care to heal because, you know, you, gotta, you don't want to share yourself with somebody that's broken. Sure. You kind of, both of you want to be on the same path. And when I meet guys that say they want a wife, it's like... It's a whole other story. Yeah, why would a person with a broken leg want to go dancing with another person with a broken leg? You right. know? Yeah. So I think your answer is why do you go out with those people if you know after the initial conversation enough about them to figure out that they're still broken and hurting? Or don't you ask enough questions before you go out with a person? Yeah? And then this spoils the whole evening, you know, when he says, oh, have you been married? Yes. You've got kids? Yeah. Oh. And then you see that look. Oh. You know. Well, you should know that before you even, you know... Follow me. There ought to be some communication to give you an idea yeah. that this person is ready to establish a new relationship. Because a lot of the guys out there already been married too. Yeah, it does take time, and um, trust God. It's not going to happen overnight. And, and when you're single, when we were apart, the thought used to come to me: Well, what if that person's the one? What if I'm missing it? See, that's the enemy. God is able to open the door and make it so clear to you and so clear to him. Don't you think that we need faith when it comes to relationships? Yeah. That, that's uh, do you think we need faith sometimes when it comes to relationships? Even a husband and wife, we need faith when it comes to, you know, fixing a, fixing a, a disagreement in the marriage. and life. Faith in what? Faith that God wants you to stay together. Faith that God wants you to have the answer and be happy and be fulfilled and all that kind of stuff. But it becomes increasingly difficult when the men don't know what their role is anymore and the women don't know what they're... Now, I want to use the word role. It sounds like a very, you know, uh, uh, sterile subject. So we could change the word role to capacity to do something that the husband, or the husband can do or the wife can't do. I think this is primarily important in establishing a good relationship. 
And most people today have been so wounded that they have no guidelines as to what is the right kind of behavior. See? And men are no longer required to treat women with love and with respect. When I say love, I just met them. I mean, have respect with them or a, a desire to, to be gentlemanly with them. Uh, you know, try to opening a door one day or you get knocked over by the woman who's already got the door halfway open. So you know, I had some guy who got out of the car to go and open the girl's door who was driving and she took off. So, it, you know, she's so frightened. Some, What's he going to come and mug me or something? No, he was trying to be a gentleman, but that didn't work too well. That's rejection for him, you know, and a paranoid woman there. So it's better off they don't go out anyway. But yeah, I, I think, you know, a lot of prayer should precede you going out with people, just not his face. He's pretty and he has a J-O-B. So what? So did the boss and strangler, you know. Invite him to this thing we're doing with the... Um, well, he bowling. did. He was a handsome fella. That other guy too. The magnum killer. You know, and once we start our small groups, invite these people. Reach out. It doesn't mean to, not, not to reach out. What, what's the worst that can happen if you meet somebody that you find attractive? First of all, ladies, don't ask him out, you know, don't do that. Let him pursue a little bit and ask it and then do it on a little bit, little bit, little bit basis. I'm divorced and because I recognize that there's still some areas that I'm trying to currently heal in, when I meet someone and the first red flag, I shut them down and I have nothing else to do with them. And I'm just to the point where I'm just like... You're not healed yet, you shouldn't be dating. <sighs> See, okay. here's what's happening. And the best help I can be to you is the, is, is the gift, the prophetic gift. See, that's the best thing. I, you know, anybody can teach you the Bible, but I can tell you what's going on with you. Because you never allowed yourself the time to get over the hurt of that and released and forgiven to the point where I can, I can say his name to you and it's not going to make you go, oh, my God, you know, or, or shrivel up on the inside or, or, or the repercussions of, of a bad relationship. You've got to be healed of that before you can go looking at another man. See, otherwise the response you're going to have is that. You're just going to reject people and take out on this poor sucker what you never got a chance to do to the other one. Follow me? So what you're doing is you're punishing men for your previous relationship. You've got to be healed of that telling me a new woman. When someone takes you out, he's not taking out a divorcee. He's taking out you. He's taking out a new woman with a new heart and a new opportunity for living. Amen. Yeah. I was actually taught two years. And that's when I got that book, The, the High... Hind's feet and high, high places. places. And I started to do my altars, and God started showing me things I had to put on the altar, and it, it took a while. And that's when he helped. Amen. We're going we're gonna to have some teaching, just saying we're talking about for the women. We're, we're going to do some things. And I okay? don't. And teach some warfare prayer. And yeah, and, and I think, you know, part of that instruction of Paul said, you know, let the elder woman instruct the younger women. Yeah. And I think that has nothing as much to do with age as it does with spiritual maturity. You see, you're, yeah. you're trying to get whole through another man. And that's a bit like, you know, it's a bit like taking the dog off the chain. You never know what you're going to get. If I were you, then I would spend more time in praying about God showing you how you can heal your own heart. And there's a lot of women doing that. And yes, it's a little bit lonely. Yes, it is. But still, you know, you can find a solace through some other well, who, married, who married correctly or they're in a good marriage relationship. Make girlfriends out of them. There's a lot of girls who would just love to go and have coffee and tea, talk with you, chat, get on the phone, blah, blah, blah. When you're feeling, I'm lonely, I'm sitting at home, and blah, 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 and I want to go out, you know, and get all dressed up. And I'll call your little help meet first and say, you know, would you pray with me? I'm feeling kind of lonely and down tonight and blah, blah, blah. And I haven't really met anybody. I thought I might go out and try to meet somebody. Oh, it's a big mistake that is, you know. That's like throwing yourself out of the sea of, <laughs> sea of the animals out there. If you get your healing first, darling, it'll be a different show altogether. And then when you go out, you'll be in control of your own heart. Right now, you're not. And all you're going to do is hurt other people. My advice, find some girlfriends that can talk to you that are healed and whole and have a good marriage. And they'll, they'll help restore you and pray with you. It won't take long. You could get it under hand in the next few months. Two or three months. You could be a different girl. When you go out, you'll be happy, full of joy. After the date, you'll be happy, full of joy, because you know who you are. How do you deal with the expectations of a family who feel or expect you to be able to perform certain duties for them based on your current position and you feel it shouldn't be so? You know, I think as a man, my first priority is my relationship with God. The second is for my family. In this case, that's my wife. I mean, you're my family, but my God family comes after my natural family. Uh, whatever my wife needs in order for her to be happy, I should be willing to provide that to her. That doesn't include another 15 pairs of shoes or, you know, 
But, but what I'm saying is, brother, if they're placing expectation on you just because you're in a position to be able to do it, that's, that's, an, that's an option for a man, not a requirement. God's not asking you to provide for your whole family if for whatever reason they don't want to. But your answer to that could be, I'll tell you what, my first priority is my, my, my own family. And if you have a need and you're asking me to help with it, I will pray about it and then actually pray about it. But if you don't feel a real strong unction to be able to bail them out, I wouldn't. Quite simply, I wouldn't. I, I think you have to maintain the, the, the priorities of who you help manage or who, who you help in life. I mean, giving, same as in God, your giving to the house of God is, is already established. Your offerings are just that. That's between you and God. And I think they ought to allow you the privilege of doing that. Now, I don't know the specifics of your situation. You know, uh, you may have been generous in the past and now you can't be. And you, when they keep pulling on you, you just, you know, feel a little bit resentful. Uh, is that the case? Yeah. Well, <laughs> quite frankly, I would just say I, I would like to help you. I will pray about it. But please don't be offended or resentful if I choose not to do that. You know, it's, it's your choice, brother. Your choice. Don't be under obligation. That's another form of manipulation. But help if you feel like it. Help. Don't help if you don't. Is it possible that God brought two people together before, say, if you found Christ? I mean, like, when I... Well, met... uh, my well, whole family's saved. Her whole family, family were Baptists, but I, I was a full-blown pagan. Yeah, he, he's the first one in generations to get saved. You too? Yeah. So See, God knew what he was doing. Yeah, there's so, a lot of times that God will, will introduce people prior to them being saved. It's just very hard that way. The, 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 the situation there is a little somewhat tricky because my wife and I were the same thing. However, yes. I will tell you this, that if your wife and you love each other and you pray and ask the Lord to help bring your wife over to your Christianity, he will do it. It may take a long... You make, you make a hard road for yourself. I mean, honestly, because Scripture encourages to marry, as I said before, a husband or a wife of like and precious faith. But there are multiple people sitting in front of me here, some other folks who just said to me, us too, who are going on for Christ now big time and God is blessing them, who weren't always, you know, in love with Jesus. You know, you got married for who knows what reason. It might have been physical, emotional. I don't know. We get married for all kinds of impulses. But God, more than anything, wants to see your wife... A child of God and and you know what what is impossible with man is possible with God so my encouragement to you is I would make that a matter of prayer every day every morning of my life that Lord I love this woman and I and now that you know your your stepchild is is in children's church I think that's awesome and now that you've begun so much of a great work father I pray that you draw my wife totally over the line to the cross and uh, that you receive Christ as a savior and God will move mountains to do that for you yeah. That's what I would suggest. It's a hard road, yes. But is it is it makeable? Absolutely. Yeah, I started Absolutely. going on Wednesdays before my husband ever did. Somebody's got to be strong in the family first. I'd come home and I'd just blow it up and go, whoa, you really missed it. Wow, it was really good. And he couldn't stand it after a while. He started going. Well, it's how does one embrace singleness and still uh, wait for the, uh, for the choice of marriage? Oh, I don't think you have to embrace singleness at all. I mean, personally... You're single, you're single, you're single, you're single. I mean, what's to embrace? It is what it is, right? Because the embracing part has the connotation to me of the person who asked the question that I feel like a martyr. I'm paying a price here. No, you're not. No, the Lord becomes your husband. No, he's not met a man. Is this a, is this a man asked this question? Uh, no, it's just a question that was up there. I'm not sure. Oh. Is this, this a woman then? Get a strong walk with God. That is Embrace telling. singleness. Now, I've never thought about it. Embracing singleness is just, I am. If, if you want to get married, why embrace singleness? You know? So your prayers are, oh Lord, thank you that I embrace my... I'm not trying to be rude. I'm just, honestly. Uh, oh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm single and it's hard, but I embrace it. How can you help me like being single? Well, you don't want to be single. So, so why pray that? Hey, how, how old was Debbie? 38? She was believing God. How old was she before you guys got married? Somewhere around there. 38, 39. She just kept believing God. And look, look now. Well, she hit him on the head, didn't yeah. she? Just... How long have you guys been married now? 25. 25 years. Yeah. yeah. I, I, what I'm trying to say is have faith for the marriage. 
You know, to embrace something is to have faith with it, to enjoy it, to, 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 to wrap your arms around it. I mean, if you want to be married, don't wrap your arms around being single. Let the Lord know, I don't want to be single, but I am, so here it is. But Lord, bring me the right guy, I'll change that real quick. It doesn't matter how long it takes. I'm waiting on you, Lord. Yeah. I don't want to make a wrong choice. We had one that said, um, how do you know when it's time to get married again? Have you met somebody? Do you love them? Yes. Does he love you? Yes. Is he a Christian? Yes. Are you, are you spirit-filled, both of you? Yes. Well, then get some counseling. <laughs> What's the problem? You're scared. No. You're, you're frightened. You must be, otherwise you wouldn't be asking those kind of questions. Has he asked you to marry him? Or does he want to get married? He wants to. Yeah, get some counseling. Get some counseling. And the reason I say that to you is counseling is like taking a car for a test drive. You know, you think this car is just what I want. I love it. It's got the power I want, the look I want. You know, it's a convertible. Love this thing. Take it out on the freeway and it's a dog, right? So I'm not saying sleep with the man. And if you have, then you need to repent of that. But without criticizing or judging. And that's the first thing that will mess up your Noah yeah, quicker so than anything tough. else. As soon as you sleep with a guy, vice versa, you lose the ability to be uh, uh, intro uh, introspective. Yeah. Yeah. Does that make sense? Don't put yourself I just happen to be house. looking on the front row. <laughs> Got another question. Yeah, because it's true. You can no longer say no to someone you've slept with. Right? So, if that's the case, then make your decision, I'm going to get to know this person. But if I were you get the counselling, it's like the test drive. You'll go through it, it'll take six, seven weeks, right? I promise you, at the end of that six, seven weeks, you'll know whether you want to marry this guy and he you. And you'll know if that car's been in a flood. <laughs> There's no warning everybody about that. <laughs> now, you ladies got that. I didn't get that. I don't know what she's talking about. I got it. In a flood? They're saying be careful to buy a car right now because people are selling yeah, but what's these that cars do with that them? had water up to here and they're hiding it. But if you go through counseling, yeah, okay, okay, that okay. stuff comes out. Oh, women are so wonderfully and mysteriously made, are they not? Yeah, right. that's what I would advise for you, sister. Go into counseling and then you'll find the little hidden things every night. You say, Lord, pray the hidden things be exposed in me and in my prospective husband. And at the end of that six weeks, you're still gooey-eyed about each other and you're sensing your spirit's right and your counselor is happy with it. Bingo. Get married. I said earlier, get married. What's the alternative? Sinning? Sinning? Or staying a spinster or a single guy for the rest of your life? I don't know about you, but, you know, I like being with my wife. I don't want to stay single and, you know, by myself. Amen. Right? Um, as a parent, how do you handle a forced relationship with a child's teacher? For example, today my child was told, I miss, now I'm Mr. And so yeah. I'm, I'm kind of... It, it Isn't that pretty, freaky? It hit me pretty tough, so I'm... Are you a single mom? Yes. Well, if it was her... I'd pull them out and put them in the I'd, yeah, I'd, school. I'm, I, can, I can see why that would upset you terribly. Uh, your only recourse is to somehow to try to get education to that young person uh, that made that comment. But you're going to be overwhelmed. The professors are doing the same thing. I watch these goo-goo fellows on the TV, and as a husband, you know, I'd be in their face because they, they, have, they have no semblance of what's right and wrong. I mean, they're so brainwashed. Did you see that thing I got the other day, If I Were the Devil? You know? They did that in 64. That's exactly right, perverting the youth. That's how they brought communism in pervert the youth and I, I, I your prayers availeth much sister but if you can practically do something to remove your child out of that environment if you think it's going to get worse I would do so it seems like a lot of people in the church believe and according to Timothy talks about leadership needing to be should be married one wife you know over the family is it necessary for me no no because, because, see, the Lord can use a single person as much as them. That's ridiculous. That's like saying, you know, I can marry a total ding-dong, but because I marry a ding-dong now, I'm released by God to be used as a teacher? That's crazy. No, it's no there's no biblical basis what, what, for that at all. Dana, because that's the kind of relationship God's wanting you when you're single to develop and have with him. Yeah. That makes for a wonderful uh, marriage. Yeah, why would you let someone project the need to be married on a person who's perfectly happy to be single? But these singles need to, she's talking about how happy, I'm telling you, I was happy when I was single. 
because it was after I developed the relationship. <laughs> oh, at first, honey, I cried myself to sleep every night. Sure my did. pillow was not really yeah, nice and sopping yeah, wet. Yeah, sure. But when I developed that relationship, there was a peace yeah. that you can't even explain. Now say that again. You're in divorce. Court. I'm going through a divorce. Okay, uh, why? Just in reconcilable differences. Uh, because what? Just differences. That's rubbish. You know, if you're going to tell me you're going to divorce somebody, as a Christian, you're a Christian? Yes, sir. All right. You got the Holy Ghost in you? Yes, sir. No such thing as irreconcilable differences. Did you commit sin before you got saved? Did yes, God sir. forgive you? If right. you sinned right now, would God forgive you? If yes, you sir. repented of it. Yeah? So if God's willing to forgive you, whatever sin you commit, if you truly repent of it, then what right have you got to say irreconcilable differences than somebody else? See? Now, if we're talking about you know, immorality and, and adulteries and all that kind of still the Bible doesn't give us an out because of that. Will God forgive you for it? Yes. But you need some counseling, son. Yeah? It's the easiest. Irre irreconcilable differences is what we based our divorce on. That's a worldly I mean, way of saying you don't like each other anymore. We're from two different nations. I mean, we have so much that's just like. <laughs> I mean, he that's... doesn't pronounce things like we do. <laughs> Well, I speak English, that's why. <laughs> but um, how do yeah, I be, a question. How, am I, how am I reasonable with somebody who's not reasonable? Um, in oh, divorce? you just need counseling, son. You know, reasonable. See, what you're saying is there, I should divorce somebody because they don't want to do what I want them to do, or they don't think the way I want them to do. Why did you get married in the first place? See? I'm talking to you as a daddy now, see? So having been there and done that, there is nothing in any marriage between two people who initially desired to be with one another that can't be corrected by God's, by God's help and God's guidance. You know? The gentleman sitting behind you, you know, he restored his whole life. He's working diligently to be the man of God that God wants him to be. You know, the easiest thing in the world would be if, if, if his wife happened to have some physical problems or emotional problems, just to walk away from it. Irreconcilable differences. Yeah, my wife's, you know, I can't talk to her. She, she, she's emotional and... Uh, she won't sleep with me anymore. I mean, you can come up with a million different reasons. But you're being pushed into this by your family too. Your family have got too much to say about it. My advice to you is get into some counseling.